Hello Booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Book Heaven Books. A few days ago, Mark from Book Time with Elvis made a video called What a Corker, where he read a passage of a book and then sang the praise of the book and just inviting us all to read it because it was very good. And then there were some video answers, other people just praising a book that they had read recently. And among these answers, there was Heather Gregg, who talked about a, an art book. I'm going to leave a link to her video in the description box and to Mark's video too. And uh, in that uh, video, she sort of nudged me, well, in the description box of the video, she, she nudged all booktubers to talk about a book that they loved and in particular she nudged me. So here I am answering with my own Corker book. Um, I have to admit that I had to Google Corker because I was not quite sure what it meant. I could, I could say it was something positive but I just wanted to make sure and a book that is a Corker is just a very very good book, something that is uh, yeah just a very very good book and that you want to praise it to everyone and just invite everyone to read it. So here is the corker that I read lately. Uh, I don't think I talked about it on this channel because uh, for some reason I stopped doing sort of Friday reads or uh, weekly reads or monthly wrap ups. So there are a few books that I read this summer that I haven't talked about on my channel. And this is one of them. This is Havana, a Tropical, Tropical Delirium by Mark Kurolansky. Uh, Kurolansky is probably better known as a writer for writing micro histories on cod and salt. Uh, but he's also a journalist and he was posted in Havana for a long time. Uh, he spent several, I think, years over there, perhaps not permanently, but he's been sent there a lot and he spent a lot of time in the city. And this is his history of the city, but also it's a portrait of the atmosphere of Havana because Havana is really all about the atmosphere. Not that I've been there a lot. I have been there. Uh, a few years ago with a bunch of friends, we went to a resort in Cuba for one week and uh, there was a day trip that we took to Havana. So it was an organized little bus tour. Uh, we could not really wander the streets as we wanted. Uh, we had limited time and all of that. But nevertheless, it sort of gave me a little bit of an idea and I could, even though I was sort of the, the ugly tourist, if I can say, uh, it's just the, the bus tour tourist, which is not always the best for a city. Um, even though it was in these conditions that I visited the city, I could feel a little something because really Havana, it has atmosphere. It has um, a spirit, I guess. And I thought this book was very good at expressing it and at showing it. So I'm going to read you two excerpts. Well, in fact, technically three, because the second one, I skip a few uh, paragraphs in the middle, uh, but uh, they, they sort of give you uh, an idea of the atmosphere of Havana. For the first one, I have to warn, there will be swear words. I'm reading what's written there. So it, it's in Spanish and in English. Uh, there are bad words in there. <laughs> So, um, by the way, I will apologize for my reading. I always think, okay, I'm good. I know how to pronounce all of these words, but as soon as I try to pronounce them out loud, suddenly I don't know how to pronounce them. So uh, I'll just do my best. Havana is hot and dealing with heat is a central part of living there. Quote, the heat is a malign plague invading everything, wrote Leonardo Padura Fuentes in the opening of his contemporary murder mystery, Mascaras, titled Havana Red in English. The heat descends like a tight, stretchy cloak of red silk, wrapping itself around bodies, trees and things to inject there the dark poison of despair and a slow or certain death." End of quote. The book's central character, the police lieutenant Mario Conde, asks, Pero como puede hacer tanto calor, coño? It is the eternal Havana question. How can it be so fucking hot? In December, cooler air comes in by sea from Florida, kicking up the surf and making it foam across the Malecon. In January and February, the temperature drops to a very pleasant 75 degrees and something that this is the best time to visit. But if you are not experiencing heat, you are not really experiencing Havana. Habaneros have developed an expertise about which street to walk on and stick to the ones that line up with the coast to afford a sea breeze. Shade is found everywhere. Habaneros are never seen sunning themselves if they can help it. They glisten with sweat, which is why they are also known for frequent bathing. Havana is not a city for people who are squeamish about sweat. Sweat is one of the many defining smells in redolent Havana and is a leitmotiv in almost all Havana literature. They sweat in all of Perura's mystery novels. They sweat in Cyrilo Villaverde's great 19th century classic novel, Cecilia Valdez. Sweat was a precept of classlessness in a city heavily demarcated by classes. Everybody sweats. 
in The Chase, where Sweat is almost one of the central characters, Carpentier described wealthy, well-dressed women at a theatre, quote, the furs they wore in spite of the heat made moisture collect on their necks and bosoms, end of quote. Rich people just sweat in better clothes. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was fun, that was interesting. And then the second place that I want to read uh, is about, uh, is about ice cream. <laughs> Government-sponsored dining and good eating perfectly intersected at one point. Ice cream. Fidel Castro loved ice cream. He was famous for interrupting long interviews and work sessions for an ice cream break. And novelist Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote that he once finished off a good-sized lunch with 18 scoops of ice cream. And if the Cuban Revolution was providing the Cuban people with health care, literacy, education and food rations, wasn't there also an obligation in this hot, muggy, tropical city to provide the people with ice cream? So then there are a few paragraphs explaining how the uh, ice cream parlor Copelia came to be. Um, it was, uh, the, the project was delegated to a Celia Sanchez and it was supposed to be built by architect Mario Girona. I'm just going to say Girona because I don't know how to pronounce the G in Spanish. According to legend, Fidel Castro was in possession of excellent recipes for 36 flavors of ice cream. Some versions of the story have him with more and some with less. It is not known where these recipes came from, but given the times, it is usually assumed that they were confiscated. He sent technicians to Canada to learn how to make the flavors and bought top-of-the-line machines from Sweden and the Netherlands. He wanted to build the world's largest ice cream parlor with the world's best ice cream for the world's best people. Girona did build the world's largest ice cream parlor. Much of its thousand person capacity is in the seating under banyan trees along pathways leading to the building. The capacity is not excessive if you believe Copelia's claim to serve 4,250 gallons of ice cream to 35,000 people a day. The wait in line was between one and two hours, occasionally longer. That no one seemed to mind is an insight into habanero character. Standing in line at Cupilia became one of the rites of Havana living. You could go with a group of friends or meet people while waiting. For foreigners, it was a way to meet locals, and for locals, it was a way to meet foreigners. Once you reached the head of the line, the wait was worth it. So, I love ice cream too. I didn't try the ice cream at Cupilia. I don't know if the store is still there, I suppose it is, uh, because uh, as it, it's made clear in this book, Havana moves very, very slowly, and uh, communism didn't help with that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I thought this book was a corker. A really good insight into Havana, how it was created, how people lived uh, throughout the uh, centuries, I guess, because the city is about 250 years old, a bit more. Uh, it was uh, it started in the 18th century. Um, so uh, yeah, the, the city has a history, a rich history, and uh, the people there has a particular personality, a collective personality. And anyway, it, I, I really love the book. So if you like armchair travel and you would like a little visit in Cuba, I recommend this book. So let me know in the comments what is a corker that you read lately and I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!